Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. A federal sex trafficking suspect is headed back to South Dakota to face several charges. Court papers say Daniel Kubica trafficked at least four people. He allegedly used Facebook Messenger to set up meetings and then force the victims to have sex for money. The alleged crimes happened in 2021 and 2022. Authorities recently caught up with Kubica in Colorado where he waived extradition this week. He's also wanted in Wyoming where he violated probation. In that case, he pleaded guilty to promoting prostitution and endangering children. A Yankton woman is behind bars, accused of making terroristic threats toward the Yankton High School. The Yankton School District went into a soft lockdown Wednesday morning after it received a suspicious call. Police later received a tip, at which led investigators to two suspects, an 18-year-old woman named Helen Moya and a juvenile. They are charged with aggravated assault and making terrorist threats. We'll have more on the arrest and the threat later today on Kelloland News. Investigators are looking into what sparked a fire in a neighborhood west of downtown Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls Fire Rescue says it happened near the intersection of West 11th Street and South Euclid Avenue around 1 o'clock this morning. Crews arriving on scene found fire coming from a home. Our news crew was able to capture this video from the scene. Firefighters searched the home and found no one inside. No one was injured. The fire was put out within 10 minutes. Police say the fire does not appear suspicious. Sioux Falls Animal Control is asking for your help to find a dog that bit a woman on Wednesday evening. Officials say a man with a brindle and white pit bull was inside the East 10th Street Hy-Vee paying for his groceries when his dog slipped its collar that was attached to a leash. A woman went to pet the dog when the dog jumped up and bit the woman on her arm. Animal Control needs to identify the dog in this incident to verify its vaccinations. If you have any information on the dog, you're asked to call Animal Control. Last night's snow and rain mix in central and western South Dakota has many roads in less than stellar condition today. This is a look at SD 511. Most of the roads in western South Dakota have scattered ice and slippery conditions. Central South Dakota is frosty with some snow packed roads. So if you need to travel, take it slow and pay attention to developing conditions. It's on the chillier side out there right now. We know it's going to be a cold evening and then snow's coming for eastern South Dakota tomorrow, right Megan? That is right, Dan. Right now we do have some sunshine, so hopefully we can start melting some of those roads even with our cold temperatures. Right now in Rapid City, 21 degrees, hardly any wind and some sunshine. Rapid City had just under an inch of snow yesterday. Right now we have 30 in Yankton, 25 in Watertown, 19 in Mobridge, 16 in Faith, and 22 degrees in Pine Ridge. We do have a strong north to northwest wind right now at 15 to 25 miles an hour, even some higher wind gusts. So with the, our cold temperatures and our strong winds, we have some cold wind chills right now. Two degrees in Faith and Buffalo, eight in Phillip and Pier, 15 in Sioux Falls and 11 in Watertown. So we'll keep an eye on these wind chills as we go in through the rest of today and into tomorrow. We do have a few clouds working their way through Kelloland, but those clouds are not producing any rain or snow. The next snow comes tomorrow morning mainly along and south of I-90. So for today, that strong northwest wind, partly cloudy skies, 36 in Sioux Falls, 33 in Aberdeen, 34 in Pier, and 31 in Rapid City. For tonight, partly cloudy skies, the winds die down, 23 are low in Sioux Falls, 17 in Aberdeen, 20 in Pier, and 16 in Rapid City. Then for Saturday, with that chance of snow, we do have a winter weather advisory for Saturday into Saturday night in Nebraska, where they could see two to four inches of snow. So for tomorrow, cloudy skies, that chance of snow, best chance along and south of I-90 for an inch or two, 32 Sioux Falls, 33 in Aberdeen, 32 in Pier, and 29 in Rapid City. We'll take a closer look at the timing of tomorrow's snow in just a little bit. 
All right, thank you, Megan. It's been 20 years since Sioux Falls Police and the Minnehaha County Sheriff's Office moved into a downtown law enforcement center. The building has served as headquarters for both departments since November of 2003. The sheriff says having both agencies under one roof has a lot of advantages when it comes to working on cases and keeping the public safe. What I like about this building is the efficiencies that we have and it, it's, it's helped to build a better relationship and continue to build a better relationship uh, and partnership between our office, the sheriff's office, and the police department. But with a growing city comes growing law enforcement demands. Find out what police and sheriff's deputies are doing to address growing pains within the law enforcement center in tonight's Eye on Kelloland at 10. The gunman who went on a shooting rampage in Maine is still on the run, and officials are offering new details about the manhunt. 40-year-old Robert Card is accused of killing at least 18 people in the town of Lewiston Wednesday night and wounding 13 others. Police say he should be considered armed and dangerous and are warning residents in Lewiston and nearby towns to continue to shelter in place. Bradley Blackburn reports from Maine. Law enforcement officials in Maine have expanded shelter-in-place orders beyond the town of Lewiston as they continue hunting for mass shooting suspect Robert Card. Police say divers will be searching the water near the dock where Card's vehicle was found. The river is a big piece of this. The car was located there. Uh, uh, evidence is located uh, at, at, in, the, in the vehicle or right there along the, the shores of the Androscoggin River. On Thursday, SWAT teams, canine units, and helicopters scoured Card's hometown of Bowdoin, even honing in on one home in particular that came up empty. Card, an Army reservist, allegedly opened fire inside a bowling alley and restaurant in Lewiston Wednesday night using a semi-automatic assault rifle with an extended magazine and a scope. Every one of those rounds that got fired need to be investigated. Every one of those cartridges that lays on the ground needs to be collected. Despite recent mental health issues, including a temporary hold at a facility over the summer, federal law would not have kept Card from obtaining a firearm. As the investigation unfolds, the names and faces of the victims are being revealed, and loved ones in lockdown are sharing memories online. Arthur Stroud was at Schmengi's Bar and Grill Wednesday night, playing pool with his father, but stayed behind. He and his wife, Christy, were raising a family together. He was a good guy, and he was family-oriented, and he always took care of us. Ben Saroy, a resident of Lewiston, says before the massacre, he always felt safe in this area. Cherish your loved ones while they're here, because it could happen, I guess, anywhere. More people were murdered in Lewiston Wednesday night than in the last 15 years combined. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Lewiston, Maine. Sources also tell CBS News officials are investigating whether Card was targeting a current or former girlfriend. The motive for the shooting remains unclear.